Parents and children. When this bond is between a mother and son, it may reveal a peculiar daily life that excludes other parties. If not being connected by DNA, they are treated as pests or mere objects, regardless of their advanced nature. They are sometimes kicked out, sometimes beaten to death. A woman married to an elite man deeply attached to his mother confesses her unjust, cruel, yet thrillingly turned around experiences. I'm Lisa, 32 years old. I married my husband Andrew three years ago. Our marriage was whispered about as a disparity marriage from the start. Andrew is an elite who graduated from a well-known university and works at a large company securities firm. He takes pride in it. In contrast, I attended a lesser-known trade school and work an ordinary job. There is a world of difference between our incomes. Why would he choose me as his wife? I honestly found it puzzling. Was I really good enough? Weren't there prettier, higher educated women? The guilt I felt at the beginning of marriage is indescribable. In hindsight, my self-deprecation might have distorted his character. Three years into our marriage, he started treating me like a maid. Lisa, bring me coffee. I can't right now. I'm doing the dishes. Really? Do what your husband tells you to. You really don't know your place, do you? This kind of conversation became frequent at home. Why do I have to do everything even though he can do it himself? Lisa, the TV! I was folding laundry nearby. Hey, I want to watch TV. The remote's right there. Who do you think you're talking to? Silently, I hand him the remote. I wonder to myself, does every only child turn out this way? As his wife, I feel less like a housemaid and more like the mother of a small child. Even a child listens better. Sometimes I attend his company's social gatherings where he treats me poorly in front of his colleagues. My wife really can't do anything right. People say that marriages with big income disparities are hard and man, they are absolutely right. She doesn't possess any of the abilities I'd expect her to have. But I feel bad about divorcing her. That's how it goes. It's never a serious atmosphere because it's a drinking party, but the discomfort gradually accumulates. Why do I have to hear such things? We can't call this a marriage. I regretted getting married. And there was another problem in my married life. It was the existence of my mother-in-law, Pauline. Lisa, what's with this house? It's unbearably dirty. Every weekend, Pauline would come over first thing in the morning and check every corner of the house, as if she was a forensic scientist looking for DNA evidence. If she found even a speck of dust or an object out of place, she'd rage like wildfire. Unbelievable! What kind of upbringing did you have? Granted, it's not perfect, but I do an adequate job cleaning and tidying the house. Andrew doesn't help at all, and all the chores fall on me. I wonder if she's even aware of that. I glared at her, thinking about talking back. What's with those eyes? This is why I didn't want a wife without an education. From the beginning of her marriage, she ridiculed us as an income disparity couple. Bullying me had become a daily routine. She divorced when Andrew was five. Perhaps because she raised him alone, she's incredibly indulgent with him, forgiving him for anything. He, for his part, is hopelessly attached to his mother. 
he's a typical mama's boy. Initially, I thought he was simply a man who cherished his parents, but oh, was I mistaken. One Sunday, Andrew, noticing the usual exchange between his mother and me, made his way to the living room in his pajamas. It was almost noon. Was he just getting up? I would appreciate if he would help me with the housework on his days off, but I couldn't voice such complaints directly in front of his mother. Whether she knew how I felt or not, she always landed the same blow. Lisa, you do understand, don't you? A wife's value lies in serving her husband. Asking him to help with housework is a huge mistake. Knowing he didn't have the slightest intention of helping, I silently started cleaning the house. He said, That's right, just as mom said. Do your job properly. Cheerfully from his sprawled position on the couch. My weekends, which I wanted to spend leisurely, were always ruined thanks to Pauline and Andrew. Then one day, even though it was only 8 a.m. on a Sunday, the outside was unusually noisy. I glanced beside the bed, but Andrew was no longer there. Huh, he got up early for once. Thinking this, I hurriedly headed to the living room. I was stunned. The room was filled to the brim with cardboard boxes. What is all this? I felt dizzy at the shocking turn of events. Here comes the sleepyhead. A voice echoed from the shadow of the cardboard boxes. It was Pauline. You're late. Come on, hurry up and help. Andrew, who always lounged on the sofa as usual, spoke while picking his nose. Help with what? Where did these boxes come from and what are they for? I raised my voice, unable to comprehend the situation. Ignoring my distress, Pauline's shrill voice echoed. Hurry up and move them! You're so slow! Explain what's happening! W what is this? When I questioned him, Andrew seemed annoyed and casually said, It's mom's stuff. She's gonna live here from today. My thought process came to a halt. Live with my mother-in-law? You must be joking! Pauline appeared nonchalant. I've already sold my house. Well, it didn't fetch a high price, though. Sold? Did you really sell your house? Yeah, I did. I'm not giving you any money. That's not what I wanted to say. Selling the house meant we couldn't kick her out. A situation of involuntary shared living was thrust upon me, and I could feel a wave of panic beginning to rise. Hurry up and help! Don't just let mom do all the work! My husband accused me, still lying lazily on the sofa. Hey, I haven't been told anything! What's happening? Gathering myself, I questioned him. Why do I need your permission? It's my house. Your house? It's also my house. Why is it your house? The name on the title is mine. But isn't it ours as a couple? I'm also paying the mortgage. Then Pauline intervened in our argument. Do you hear yourself, Lisa? You're living on his salary. You're such an ungrateful daughter-in-law. I need to teach you a lesson or two. Irritated by being constantly blamed, I cut her off. Please, Pauline, just stay quiet. A quiet, burning anger was swelling up within me. H how dare you? Who do you think you are, huh? They were both taken aback. And I want to ask you the same thing. Do you realize how selfish you've been? Enough with this shit! 
It was my fierce rebuttal, the first since our marriage. They were both flustered, mouths agape. They really were like two peas in a pod. Two rotten peas. Silence followed. I was sure then I wouldn't live with these selfish people anymore. After a while, Andrew looked at me and stood up as if he had an idea. If you can't listen to me, then I guess there's no choice, he said and took out some documents from a drawer in the living room. It was the divorce papers I had prepared just in case. Huh, he knew I was hiding them. I was thinking of using them someday, but he beat me to it. Andrew, did you prepare this? Pauline asked, looking confused. No, she did. Even though she doesn't have the guts to divorce, she's very thorough with the formalities. He smirked, waving the divorce papers in front of my face. Well, you really are something, she said sarcastically. They probably thought I would cry and apologize. Well, maybe it's about time. Let's get a divorce. Sign those papers right now. I replied, laying down the card I had decided to play. He froze, his hand still holding the divorce papers. His previously confident demeanor had vanished, replaced by cold sweat as he saw the seriousness in my eyes. He must have realized that I was serious. However, he still pretended to be strong. You're just bluffing about divorce, aren't you? If that's what you think, then sign it already. Are you sure about this? Your life is going to be miserable as a divorcee. Whatever. It was absurd that he was saying this after initiating the divorce. Fine, I'll sign it. Don't regret it later. He said, taking his time to sign the papers. Pauline was glaring at me. I ignored her gaze and started to pack my things to leave the house. The hallway was filled with boxes of her stuff. I packed the bare minimum into a carry-on and prepared to leave the house. I decided to leave behind our couple photos and mementos. They felt like garbage that I wanted to throw away. Once I had packed and went down to the living room, Andrew tossed the divorce papers at me. Here. Alrighty. He still looked skeptical. I realized he was still looking down on me, underestimating me. What a jerk. He must have thought that I was just having a temporary lapse of judgment. I left the house without saying anything more. There was no sign of him following me. It was a bit frustrating, but I was filled with a refreshing feeling knowing that my life as a slave was over. Today was Sunday. I decided to submit the divorce papers the next day and first return to my parents' house. It took me two hours by train to get back to my parents' house. They were surprised by my sudden return. Welcome back, Lisa. Are you alone? My mother asked. What happened? Where's Andrew? My father followed up. You wouldn't believe what happened. I recounted the day's events to them. I showed them the divorce papers with Andrew's messy signature on it. It happened in the heat of the moment, but I don't regret it at all. I spat out. My parents were furious after hearing my story. We had no idea he was like that. Why didn't you tell us anything until it came to this? I apologized to my parents. I couldn't stop the tears from overflowing. I felt like something I had been holding back for so long was finally crumbling away. They both held me gently. I was glad I had come home. I felt so from the bottom of my heart. The next day, I told my boss the situation and took a break from work. 
After submitting the divorce papers to the government office, I had to return to that house one more time to sort out the remaining items. It was a weekday during the day, so Andrew was likely not there, but his mother would be. However, they were strangers to me now. When I opened the door and went inside, Andrew and his mother were sitting on the living room sofa, having a friendly chat. She shouted in anger, You have some nerve coming back here! But in his usual tone, Andrew said, You're late. You have plenty to do. He must have thought I was returning as expected. I'm not back. I just came to sort out my things, I responded. They both looked at me in confusion. As promised, I have submitted the divorce papers. Thought you might want to know. At my words, they both froze as if time had stopped. Wait, you submitted them? Really? What's so surprising about that? Of course, you signed them, didn't you? I retorted calmly. Relax, we're strangers now. I emphasized the word strangers dramatically. They had greatly underestimated how serious I was. I couldn't stop laughing at how satisfying it felt. Can you afford to live on your salary? That's right. You're awfully cheeky for someone who hardly works. These two still didn't get it. Listen, I am a full-time employee. Sure, I don't earn as much as you, but I have enough salary and savings to live on my own. I had worked full-time for 10 years. Andrew sat there dumbfounded. I decided to throw out everything unnecessary from the house and thoroughly enjoy the feeling of minimalism. Sorting out my belongings was filled with joy and pleasure. I didn't hear from Andrew for a while. About three months later, when I finished work and left the office, I saw a familiar face. It was Andrew. He looked thinner and paler than before. His hair was messy and his suit was rumpled. There was no sign of the elite employee I once knew. Lisa! He cried out in a desperate voice. Against my better judgment, I agreed to talk with him at a cafe. He had been so arrogant and selfish. Seeing him so small and weak, I felt a twinge of pity. As you can see, I'm not doing well. Please, come back. I can't go on like this. He pleaded. What happened? What's so hard? I don't have a place at the company anymore. Is this somehow related to the divorce? I questioned, to which he began to explain the circumstances. The shock and loneliness of the divorce led him to take frequent absences from work, and his relationship with his mother had also become strained. I can't do without you. Serve me again for my sake. At first, it seemed like he was speaking honestly, but the moment he said, serve me, I saw through his shallow motives. He just wanted someone who would listen to him and comply. He wanted to continue getting his way. Why don't you ask your mommy? Don't say such things, Lisa, I'm begging you. He cried as I looked down at him and considered my thoughts. His job involved a lot of socializing as a couple. Maybe rumors of domestic discord had started circulating because I was no longer present at these events. I'm sure his pride wouldn't allow him to report the divorce. He didn't want to lose the status of being married, which is a mark of maturity. The conspicuous wedding ring still shining on his left ring finger confirmed it. Do you think I'll return to such a slave-like life if you beg? S slave 
You love me, don't you? He replied, still not understanding the situation. Listen, we're divorced now, so we're strangers. Bye! I said, regretting having indulged in this nonsense. I left money for my coffee on the table and left the cafe. For a moment, I thought I may have been harsh, but my disdain for his persistent selfishness never waned. I later heard that Andrew had lost his job and had to sell his house to live in a cramped apartment. His mother had become a wandering elderly woman with dementia. It was a fitting end for a man whose only quality was looking down on others. I genuinely thought it served him right. To completely sever my ties with Andrew, I applied for an overseas training program at my company. It was something I had always wanted to do since I joined the company. I could never have considered leaving the U.S. and leaving my husband behind, but now I was free. I would live for myself and do what I wanted to do. Come to think of it, Andrew had said that he wanted to study abroad but couldn't. How ironic that I would be the one to do so. A new chapter in my life was just beginning. What would have happened if he hadn't agreed to write the divorce papers? I might still be enduring a suffocating slave-like life. When I think about it, I can't thank him enough for his misunderstanding in signing the divorce paper so easily. Because now, I am the happiest I have ever been. Oh, and I haven't told anyone about the $30,000 in savings I stashed away in a bank account I opened immediately after we got married. <laughs>